In Italy, the Bay of Naples features several pure gems in the form of extraordinary islands. The most famous is the mythical Capri. With its mild climate and breathtaking landscapes, it is the ultimate romantic island. There are also the islands of Ischia and Procida, less well known, but just as magnificent for those who love the Dolce Vita. Away from the hordes of tourists, Capri and its sister islands offer up fairy tale Italian villages and castles in the sky. Lost off the Italian coast lies Ponza, a conserved, untamed paradise. Embark on a journey to the romantic islands. The best way to discover Capri is to take the chairlift to the highest point on the island, Monte Solaro, peaking at 1,932 feet. Perched 70 feet above the ground and rocked by the gentle sea breeze, tourists come from all over the world to take pictures of this stunning view. This is truly one of the world's most romantic getaway destinations. Clinging to the cliff sides is the city of Capri. The narrow streets filled with tourists lead to the famous Piazzetta, a small, charming square that houses the 17th century Santo Stefano Church. It was built in honor of Sister Serafina di Dio, a nun who devoted her life to the people of Capri. The streets of the historic center encourage strolling and contemplation. Capri wavers between sea and mountain. From the city heights, a small tramway moves slowly through the cypress trees. Its final stop is the beach at the Marina Grande. With clear blue turquoise water, these beaches rival those of the Caribbean islands. Marina Grande is a dream come true for romantics. Port and its colored houses welcome both amateur yachtsmen and the ferries coming from Naples. A famous wine springs from the grapes commonly grown on the outdoor terraces. On the other side of the island, tucked into the lavish vegetation, are the luxury hotels and dream homes, inaccessible properties belonging to billionaires and celebrities.
Below, one finds the Marina Piccola, the most exclusive private beach of the island. This is the Jet Setters Beach, who use it as a harbour for their yachts. The view from the island's most beautiful villas is dominated by the Faraglioni, Capri's large emblematic boulders. The road that winds its way up the side of the ridge near Monte Solaro offers a stunning view of the Faraglioni. For the visitors, this is the ideal place to take pictures resembling the iconic Capri postcards. On the top of Monte Solaro, a statue of Emperor Tiberius contemplates his villa, located on the other side of the island. This is Villa Jovis. Capri has attracted the world's rich and powerful since ancient times. Two thousand years ago, Tiberius was the Roman emperor. Proud of his power and glory, he decided to build the greatest of his residences in Capri. He fell in love with the island and decided to make it his primary home. Above the villa, next to the Santa Maria del Sorcoso church, a bronze Virgin Mary keeps vigil over Villa Jovis, a jewel of Roman architecture. This palace is over 43,000 square feet. The structures house the emperor's private quarters, thermal baths, kitchens, and dozens of gardens and patios. Built at an elevation of almost 1,000 feet, the fortress overlooks all of Capri. From one lookout point, one can see Monte Solaro. From the other side, the emperor had a gorgeous view of the Bay of Naples and Mount Vesuvius. Tiberius also had a dark side. He was notorious for his cruelty. The emperor would draw to Capri people he wished to assassinate. He would invite all of high society to his lavish parties. But after the feast, certain guests would disappear mysteriously. Under the pretext of a stroll in the garden, Tiberius would lure his unlucky victims into a deadly trap. Historians of that era tell of him throwing his victims over the cliffs in a place that is still called Tiberius Leap today. Nowadays, Capri is synonymous with the Dolce Vita. At the beginning of the 20th century, the world's billionaires began to flock to the island. Among them was German industrialist Friedrich Krupp, who helped make it a trendy destination. Capri also attracted artists and intellectuals. Even Lenin spent time on the jet-set island while preparing for the 1917 revolution. Via Krupp is a masterpiece. 
It is a marble paved path that snakes along the cliffs down to the Marina Piccola. Built in 1902, the road requires constant attention from workers who protect the mountainsides from the falling rocks. These are the dream homes that have contributed to Capri's luxury image. With their private beaches, the privileged enjoy their vacations away from staring eyes and protected from the tourists. A life beyond the reach of ordinary men. In the city center of Capri, one finds the 14th century Certosa di San Giacomo, along with the gardens of Augustus and their Art Nouveau statues. In Capri, one must lose oneself on the many cliffside paths to discover the island's hidden treasures. Like this villa, deserted today, but which enjoyed its heyday in the 1920s. Villa Fersen was famous for its parties that brought together the elite artists and writers of the times, back when Capri was still a fisherman's island. second floor, the famous flower-paved terrace faces the Bay of Naples. In the gardens, reproductions of Greek columns made up an arbor. The villa was built in 1905 by Jacques Dadelsvard Fersen, the son of a rich industrialist and a poet in his spare time. It is said that he made his life the work of art he was never capable of writing. He would meet a tragic end. Following intense heartbreak, he killed himself by swallowing a fatal dose of cocaine. On the front of the villa is an inscription that reads, A Shrine to Love and Sorrow. We return to the port of Capri. And head towards Capri's most famous attraction. Tourists come from all over the world to admire this incredible natural wonder. All the boats race to a single destination, the Blue Grotto. Grotto is an enchanting place. In a small bay hidden amongst the rocks, visitors prepare themselves for a strange experience.
they always follow the same ritual. They climb aboard the small blue boats. Entering the cavern comes with a mandatory fee. Those who re-emerge seem overcome. But what is the secret of the Blue Grotto? To enter, one must lie down in the boat and pass through a minuscule tunnel that opens up on a vast underground cave flooded with blue light. Turn to the slopes of Monte Solaro, the highest point of the island. Here, the wild side of Capri lends itself to contemplation. A short path through the forest leads to the church of Santa Maria a Sotrella, suspended above the cliff. This part of the island has remained undisturbed and untamed. The agricultural properties are open to those visitors seeking fresh air and authenticity. Milena's family has always lived in Capri. Over the past 10 years, this master chef has transformed her kitchen into an indispensable stop for attuned visitors. Valeria, how Today, she's going to reveal the secret recipes of caprese gastronomy. Many people use ricotta, no good. Ravioli, we make only with this one. And we use also for fish and for vegetables. And now we use small this one for calamari. Okay, we do so. This is a typical uh, cheese of Capri and Sorrento. Now we put uh, Majorana. Uh, 
I put uh, inside cheese, eggs, parmigiano, and majorano. The families of fishermen were poor and only cooked using ingredients from the sea or the farm. You know, all the time, um, all family uh, have cow in the, uh, in the garden near house. So they use all product of uh, their farm. Like in Milena's garden. After we cook uh, um, torta di mandorle, uh, cheese uh, um, cake on, uh, with uh, a mand, and we uh, no use flour because uh, typical is uh, no use uh, flour. Almonds, chocolate, butter, eggs. All this seems incredibly appetizing. But if you stay with Milena, do not count on losing any pounds. She is a true food lover who never stops doing what she does best. And as the sun goes down, she is still in front of the oven. This time, she's making her famous Capri ravioli. Followed by a sea bream stew. Today, Milena cooked for eight hours straight. On the other side of Monte Solaro lies Capri's twin city, Anna Capri. Long since forgotten by tourists, it has remained genuinely charming. It has become a rite of passage for lovers of the island. In the center of Anna Capri, one cannot miss a strange red house. It was built at the end of the 19th century, after the American Civil War, by Colonel John Clay McCowan. Its style incorporates a mix of Spanish, South American, and North African influences. Transformed into a museum, the house attracts a number of visitors who come to admire the unique collection of Roman statues found at the bottom of the Blue Grotto. To escape the chaos of Capri, the local artists found refuge in Anna Capri, and their artwork lines the city streets. San Nicola Square features the church of San Michele Arcangelo. It is famous for housing a masterpiece from the 18th century. 
a one-of-a-kind ceramic paved floor. It was created by Neapolitan master Leonardo Chiesi. The fresco represents scenes of paradise lost, with Adam and Eve living amongst mythical animals. Along its coastline, Capri reveals its historic and glorious past. At the northern tip is another Roman villa. Villa Damacuta was once the summer residence of Emperor Augustus. At a slight distance is an edified watchtower that once protected the island from Saracen invasions. Far from the cliches, tourists and dream houses, Capri and its people have managed to preserve their way of life. We now head north towards the mysterious neighboring island of Ischia, which beckons from some 20 miles off. Facing the small port of Ischia, where the fishermen auction their catch, lies Aragonese Castle. This small fortified town seems to float directly on the sea. It is actually a monumental fortress that served as refuge for Ischia's inhabitants against pirate and barbarian attacks. In the 15th century, Ischia was under Spanish control. The King of Aragon then built the Castello on the ruins of an ancient Roman city. The entire local population took shelter in the fortress. It thus became a small city of about 10,000 inhabitants. This is the convent of Santa Maria della Consolazione. Here, the nuns had to follow a macabre ritual. They kept a watchful eye on the dead until they decomposed in these obscure crypts. Many of them gave their lives to this task. This city experienced its golden era in the 16th century. The Castillo grounds include an abbey and 13 churches. It harbors 1,892 families. It was also a stronghold where the Prince of Aragon would welcome sovereigns from all over the world. On the patios, they were greeted by spectacular views of Ischia. Whether they were military men, cooks or farmers, the people of the castle dedicated their lives to serving the prince and the church. The small city was practically self-sufficient. Everything was grown locally. This press was used to make wine for both mass and various court banquets. Taking a small road, one finds the barracks that would later become the Borbonico prison.
South of the castle are the former princely gardens, which may inspire a romantic stroll. The end of the day is an ideal time for taking the sun path that winds along the cliff sides. It leads to the pretty Madonna della Libera church, which was built in the 12th century and boasts incredibly well-preserved frescoes. To finish the tour of the Castillo, one can visit Santa Maria Assunta Cathedral, which was built in the 14th century. It was largely destroyed by British cannons in 1809. Laden with history and beauty, the Castello is a source of great pride for the people of Ischia. Rosario Di Minico is a ceramicist. In his workshop, he preserves a tradition originally from Crete and present on the island since ancient time. Ceramics is above all about precision. The most delicate part is applying the colors. If one doesn't use enough, then the colors whiten and fade during the baking process. Each piece is baked in the oven at nearly 11,000 degrees. That's why we have to be really careful when applying the colors. Otherwise, the result can be disappointing. I've always painted. I've always drawn. I often spent time with artists such as sculptors, uh, ceramicists, and others. Because this has always been my true passion. And this passion has now become my work. And that makes me happy. Rosario's clients only want one-of-a-kind pieces. Well, they're for people's homes, hotels or restaurants. No one wants the exact same thing as another person. Now, that's why each piece is unique and original. I never make the same thing twice. In the joyful jumble of his workshop, Rosario also makes artifacts like the famous lemons of Ischia. The soil on the island is rich in clay that serves as the base for all ceramic work. Now, clay is really just dirt that one can mold easily. This here is unbaked clay. It's still wet and soft. But, for example, once it dries, it becomes like this. Once the piece is dry, it's also hard and can easily break. It's still fragile. This is the color it takes on after baking. That's when it becomes really hard. It won't break. Lemons and pomegranates are in high demand. They're all made by hand. That's why they're so much more beautiful. They're not made using a mold. 
o, o altre cose. Of course there are fruits and fish. But what Rosario really prefers to paint is the Castillo, which he sees every day from his window. Ischia is a volcanic island, which is why it is reputed for its hot thermal waters. At the southwest tip are the thermal baths in Sorghetto Bay. The 99 degree hot water springs run straight into the ocean. Their exceptional healing powers attract tourists from all over Italy and beyond. Further south is the great Scoglio rock and the tranquil port of Sant'Angelo. The small black sand beach and the multicolored houses paint a postcard backdrop. This is a popular vacation spot for Neapolitans. Ischia, Capri's big sister, is perfect for all those who seek a quiet and peaceful piece of paradise. Facing Ischia is Procida, the smallest island in the Bay of Naples. Like Ischia, it is a volcanic island. On the northern shore, with its black sand beaches and strangely formed rocks that are sculpted by the water, is the seaside resort of Chiricello, in a relaxing and timeless atmosphere. Here, nothing seems to have changed. At the tip of the island, the small fishing port of Lido di Procida has maintained all of its charm and authenticity. Procida has remained protected from tourists. Don't expect to find any luxury hotels or million dollar homes. Throughout history, Procida also needed to protect itself from pirates and invading barbarians. On the highest rock of the island lies the Terra Murata fortress. Like the Castello Aragonese, it was built in the 15th century. Both the high cliff sides and its imposing ramparts protected it. Yet even in the Middle Ages, well before the walls were built, the dwellings themselves served as shields. They are built touching one another, leaving only narrow streets for passing through.
With its small square and coloured houses typical of the Neapolitan coastlines, the centre of the village brightens up the once austere atmosphere that reigned here. In the bay, one finds the magnificent Chaya volcanic beach. The true treasure of Presida is the Marina Coricella, a truly breathtaking place of beauty. It sparkles like a jewel, the facets of which are these multicolored facades. Straight out of a fairy tale, the Marina Coricella feels surreal and wonderful. It is truly unique. It is in this dream decor and this small cafe that the well-known movie Il Postino was filmed. It tells of a friendship between a mailman and a famous writer, Pablo Neruda. The Marina Coricella was also the backdrop for the talented Mr. Ripley movie starring Matt Damon. In the large bay, the vessels of amateur yachtsmen mix with the local fishing boats. Far from the sequins and show business, Presida is a pearl of the Mediterranean that blesses all its visitors with unforgettable memories. Over 125 miles to the north of the Italian shoreline lies untamed Ponza. It has remained pure with its distinctive small villages, deep bays and grottos, enclosing pools of bright azure or emerald waters. On a rocky overhanging is the old Frontoni fort, built in the 15th century to keep watch over the sea. The landscape is a succession of hills and scrubland, sprinkled with wild reed. Two-thirds of Ponza are uninhabited. The island seems to exist beyond time itself. Much like this small fishing port. It is completely preserved, with its ochre and red walls hanging like a half-moon overlooking the docks. It was built in the 18th century, a time when the people of Naples came to settle on the island and developed its fishing industry. 
In the 1960s, faced with tough living conditions, numerous locals left to try their luck in the United States. But today, almost to spite destiny, Ponza is reborn and has become one of the most sought after destinations for rich Italian families seeking their corner of unspoiled paradise. The fishermen's villas and modest homes on the highlands of the island have been purchased and renovated. Ponza unites a large variety of Mediterranean influences, including the area's Roman and Greek heritage. This is why, with its labyrinth of streets, whitewashed houses, and colored facades, Ponza resembles a Cycladic island. Today, it has become a trendy destination. In the summer, the population soars from 3,000 to 25,000. But in the low season, the island recovers its peacefulness. Hidden deep inside this cove is a secret and magical place, Cala Feola. It is a small crescent-shaped beach with white sand and crystalline water where boats bob in time to the sea's rhythm and the fishermen's shacks are carved out of the rock. One feels like being at the ends of the earth, beyond the reaches of time. In the port is a small restaurant, La Marina. It belongs to two brothers. One is a cook and the other a fisherman. On the menu, the catch of the day. The terrace looks over a small natural pool of crystal clear water. Feola Cove has yet to be invaded by the hordes of tourists. It has remained a fisherman's spot. With its enchanting atmosphere, Cala Feola is a small piece of paradise. We have now come to the end of our journey through the romantic islands. They offer magnificent landscapes that exalt nature's true power and beauty. They remind us of the tormented story of this part of Italy, rich in its Greek, Roman, and Spanish influences.
But each of these islands is a gem adorned with heavenly beaches, luxury homes, and multicolored villages. It is the destination of choice for lovers and anyone who is still a romantic at heart.